Hello everyone. Today I have Shannon here from Objective Personality. How's it going, Hi. Shannon? I'm very good. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited to have you here uh, today in this, I guess, talk. We're going to talk a little bit about Objective Personality and Shannon, if you are not already familiar with her. We're also going to be comparing and contrasting a little bit about the ENFJ and ENTJ personalities and we might have some things in common and some things that are different. Right. So, yeah, I'm so excited to Good. dive into this. Me too. Yeah. Um, would you like to sort of introduce yourself to the people who maybe don't know who you are? Yeah, sure. So uh, we have a channel. It's called Objective Personality. I work with my partner, Dave. And yeah, we started this whole game a really long time ago, just kind of diving into Myers-Briggs and spending time there really quickly. It led us to Carl Jung, cognitive functions, studying more about the cognitive functions. And uh, we were just using it in business. Most of the time we were using it in business. Um, but then it started really, it really did trickle into our personal lives. Where the more we started kind of diving into the functions, the more we learned about our own selves. And it was, it, it started becoming for us a tool that was actually very much solving interpersonal conflict, business conflict. It was, you know, of course, bringing massive understanding to, you know, everything that we're working on. So we just kept pulling on the thread and kept discovering more, discovering more, discovering more. And over time, it just became our whole lives. It, it just every conversation, it became about, you know, the cognitive functions. So now um, after we kind of figured out some more parts to the code we just were like okay so the only way to really do this is to actually start teaching it start talking about it because we wanted to get the information out there uh long after that we would be gone so yeah. in everything that we had discovered we wanted other people to be able to have it so that's yeah, what we're so doing question really quick something that stuck out to me when you're saying that so the as soon as you i guess learned about type what was your first thought you're like oh i could use this or what right. was that like? Because I feel like I was, I'm the opposite where I'm kind of realizing that I could use this for business now. Oh, <laughs> it's sure. like, oh, I, oh, I could use this for my personal life. <laughs> right. <laughs> and now totally. like, as I'm following like the NI, like unraveling, right. I'm like, oh, wait, this is something I could use for right. practical purpose as well. So right. tell me, I guess, more about your first instinct Yeah. of like, oh, I could use that. Yeah, the well, originally, I think, I mean, I learned of it from Dave. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I had taken, you know, stuff in, in college and even jobs and stuff like that, I, like a strength finders type test, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I had taken it back in the day, but I really didn't take any of it seriously at all. But and did you but, always test ENTJ? I tested ENTJ on the strength finder thing back in, you know, it was like the first thing I ever tested as. And um, I was like, I don't like that. That's not me. <laughs> Just toss. <laughs> Completely don't relate. I don't want to be the commander of anything or whatever the thing was. You know, oh. I was like, no, nope, don't relate. No. Nope. Um, and then, you know, I had taken a few Myers Briggs after I had met Dave, just as, a, as you know, kind of a joke for funny. Um, and I tested uh, almost all of them, you know, just INTP, I tested a lot and INFJ. And it's just so funny how off and different that yeah. actually is. Like when you're in the profiles, you're like, just time of day, I guess, you know, so, yeah. um, but I did learn from it from Dave and his business partner at the time. So they were already using it in business. That was like what they were kind of, you know, pulling it out and understanding it for, because a lot of what would happen is we would get so many emails that were just like, it was as if the same person was coming through. And of course, you know, Dave with very strong and I is like, okay, stop. This is so weird. <laughs> this is the same guy. Like oh God, somebody's yeah. trolling me, you know? They, they would write the same. They were all ISTJs. Like our whole forum, there was so, the percentage of ISTJs on the for, uh, forum was, was very high. You know, it just, it lent itself to like, I want to make an RC plane out of foam. So yeah, we were using it mostly for that. Um, and then they were just testing it out. So they would change the homepage and test out things based on not their own savior functions, uh, somebody else's savior functions. It led us to having to make manuals. We didn't, we didn't value manuals, like, you know, yeah. like really clear cut, very detailed manuals because we don't think in SI. So that yeah. led us to actually, you know, coming up with a whole different set of like products 
because wow. uh, that's what the market was. Oh, we so don't it's like you guys kept getting the same questions from SI users. Like, yes. Hey, where's this SI? <laughs> yes, exactly. And so, so like funny. we used to have these like product pages with the, with the planes and we would have to like put every single SI detail oh, of God. prop, <laughs> you know, the, the prop spinner and the motor, or this type, like make sure you have every single bit of it. And it was just funny because that was the part that they would like screen capture and they would show it to everybody on the forum. I'm like, okay, yeah. I don't feel like that's valuable because it's not valuable to me. I'm like, look at the picture. It looks great. You know, yeah. it flies good. that's all I cared about. Yeah. So yeah, it did. It was an area that we started in just because it was very effective to get to know who you are actually trying to sell to. That was just where yeah. we started, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so did you start to, I guess, realize just with Dave being INTJ and you being ENTJ, you started right. to see like, oh wait, I can kind of see the similarities and differences personally. And then sure. that led you down looking sure. into more of the layers or what was that like? You know, it's very interesting that you say that because now actually looking at the code, like Dave and I are just exact opposites. Like we yeah. have all the same functions, mm -hmm. um, but our activation of them is exactly the opposite. So yes, yeah. we have a lot in common. Like we love TE talking out things, uh -huh. you know, just banging ideas against ideas, tossing ideas. What about this? Will this work? Will that work? Will this work? Will that work? We do. We do love TE talking. Um, but I had no idea that at the time that I had like, you know, what we call demon and I. I had no idea. I just thought, no, yeah. I'm always, I'm always thinking about the abstract. You know, I just automatically yeah. assumed that. And we thought that at the time because we just knew, we knew the, the letters and we knew the functions underneath. We had no idea that there was a priority to, yeah. you know, jumping or not jumping. No idea. So, yeah. yeah. So random question, kind of a tangent, but I'm just curious is, do you think that if you and Dave would have known type at all, that you would have looked at that guy and been like, oh yeah, we're very similar. Or do you think that <laughs> you would be like, no, we're so different. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, right. I know. I, I, that is funny that you asked that because I do think that a lot of people will be really attracted to the opposite type uh -huh. and, and they will sometimes say, that's definitely me, you know, like that's so yeah. me. I do that. I do that all the time. And it's like, yes, you know, you will do that. I do a lot of the things that Dave does a very uh -huh. small percentage of the time, you know, yes. when I'm swinging. So yeah, yeah, I think that happens a lot. It's interesting because <laughs> there's been a couple INFJs that are the very introverted, potentially sleep first types. Okay. Maybe we have different, I guess, uh, gender types where I will like through the lens of type, I'll look at them and be like, oh yeah, we're processing the same. All right. But then if they were to really know me and be like, we're so different. Like, I'm pretty right. sure my INFJ partner is sleep first okay. uh, with like low blast and uh, mm -hmm. opposite genders of me, like masculine okay. NI, masculine TI. So right, like right. we actually are very different. Like the, the way that we, I guess, act is different, right. even though we can understand each other. Right. So yeah, right. it's, it's weird. <laughs> it's like I get it. Yeah. <laughs> you're just looking at the letters of like, oh, we share three of the same letters. Yay. Right. Right. <laughs> That's so true. Cause, cause now yeah. that I know, like now that I know yeah. what Dave's functions are, I'm like, oh my gosh, you and I are like oil and water. Like we are just unbelievably different. But then when yeah. we get in a flow, it's just like, oh, I, I could talk to you all day. I have mm -hmm. lots in common. We think the same, we puzzle the same, but then, yeah, when it comes down to it, I come to an answer very differently than he comes to yeah. an answer, even if we will still end up at the same answer, but that does happen a lot. Yeah. So yeah. tell me a little bit about your journey and I guess going from being like, oh, sure, I guess I'm an ENTJ to being like, I'm a masculine TE, TESE play. <laughs> Like, right. like, so what, like, tell me a little bit about that. <laughs> okay. So the parts very much, like I said, it's like pulling a thread and then it just like expanded. It was like unraveling a sweater. But, um, at the very, very beginning, it, the first parts that kind of got discovered were the human needs. And so once we started kind of like really realizing that, wait a minute, this, the stuff that Tony Robbins was discovering is the cognitive functions. He just didn't know it. He didn't know that yeah. those human needs that he was discovering were very much connected to the functions. And that was like life changing. That was where all of this kind of like really intensified 
like, oh my gosh, wait a minute. Now I can start actually seeing reoccurring behavior and what I love and what I fear. So once that happened, we started recognizing, wait a minute, there's, there's four of these parts that all connect to. So, so the DE, whether you're FE or, or TEs, which, which is uh, why you and I have so much in common. It's like, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's seeking even Z's, fair Z's, equal Z's, wanting everyone to be included, wanting to care about others, wanting to make sure that you're aligning with others, moving your opinion to make sure that you're including others' opinions. Like that's what the DE is constantly trying to do, trying to align with others, making others feel comfortable. And then the DI is the opposite. It's like, I'm responsible for my own opinion. I'm responsible to stand by my opinion. I'm responsible to have that very strong opinion. And then I am hoping for and wanting to find a tribe that then moves towards aligning with my opinion. So it's like one of those is a, is a need for validation and one of them is a need for significance. So mm -hmm. that coin is extremely opposite. So now that you see like you can be one above the other, automatically it's now telling you where it is in your function stack. Like, okay, so this one has to come above this one no matter what. So looking at Dave and I, it was like, oh, well, that's easy. Dave is definitely OI. He definitely has a need for control. He has a definitely a need for narrowing down, keeping order, having mm -hmm. um, certainty is a good word that Tony Robbins likes to use. Mm -hmm. And then we looked at me and it was like, but I am a chaos monkey. So yeah, what do I, I do? That could be interesting <laughs> for us to talk about too, right. is because sometimes people even have, I've been accused of being like an ESFP or ESTP. Sure. And it's like, I don't know if people on YouTube, cause like whenever I'm on YouTube, I'm like kind of, I'm like on, I try and use right. like maybe more SE to be like, Hey guys, like the right. camera's on. Uh, I'm definitely kind of a control freak and you know, <laughs> I'm right. curious how that goes, how that is for you. Right. But before we get there, just in case people are unfamiliar with your work and not following, I want you to continue of like, <laughs> I guess your discovery of, because what does it mean to be a T-E-S-E -E ESJ? Okay. Right. Okay. So uh, let me just do a quick breakdown. So it's the human need of DE, like I just said, is either TE or FE, but the human need is, let's just call it validation for keeping it short. Validation, wanting to align outwardly with others. And then OI, so it's, it's uh, all of the introverted observations. Introverted observations can either be NI or SI. And those have the need for certainty, they're wanting control, they're wanting order, and they're responsible for narrowing down. OE, so observer extroverted, it's either going to be SE or NE, and that's just the need for variety. It's responsible for basically changing the channel, constantly seeking new, constantly uh, looking for the better, the best variety. Uh, and then DI, that's decider introverted, uh, that's going to be either FI or TI. So, you know, you have all of them, just mm -hmm. two of them are going to be your saviors. You get one decider, one observer as your saviors, and then you get two of them as what we're calling demons. And it's a decider introverted or a decider demon and a uh, observer demon. Basically, you get two saviors. It's like you need to have an observer and a decider to kind of make an action. And it seems, you know, if you look at it like evolutionary wise, to get moving, you need somebody to have the ultimate say. And that's kind of what the saviors are. So for you, yeah. the saviors that have the ultimate say are, I'm obligated, I'm responsible, I have to help the tribe above myself. Mm -hmm. And that's what your Effie is doing. And then you're also savior obligated to plan, organize, keep order, see what's coming next, prepare, narrow down. That's what ultimately has the say for you doesn't mean you don't have SE. Of course you have SE and maybe you're using SE right now. And a lot of times when people are using their demon functions, they might even be more, you know, like it might be even more, let's say your demon functions are more on the immature side. So when I'm using my DI, I might be a little bit stubborn. I might be a little bit shubby. I might be a little bit pushy because I'm finally coming out and I'm using my little baby FI and I'm going to be, you know what, I'm going to do what I want. And I get a little bit bratty. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I relate to that. <laughs> right. I'm still standing up for myself, like no yeah. one weren't allowed. <laughs> but I did. I told myself I wasn't allowed. So, yeah, absolutely. And when I use my ni function, it's a little bit like 
you don't even know what I can see and I could see what's coming and I, I, I could see over that hill and you don't know and I get aggressive about it and I get a little pushy about it because it's an immature I don't calmly use it. I'm not using it all day. So it's not, you know, <laughs> it's like, well, people can probably see me using that function. <laughs> it's just oh not as God. strong, not as mature as the other two. Yeah. So how did you come to the conclusion that you were not, I guess, like an intuitive savior? Like, and was right. that hard for you? Yeah, you, it was. Yeah. yeah. It totally <laughs> was. Like, well, it was first like, and of course, you know, as an EJ, as a DE, Dave, like, <laughs> it was funny yeah. because we were like, we were like looking at Dave and our business partner because they're the same type. They're uh -huh. both, they're both INTJs, but they're so different. And I was like, why are you two so different? Because oh one God, of yeah. them is DE and one of them is DI. So like you have a, you have Dave who's a lead sleep, which is NIFI and our other business partner is a lead blast, NITE. And I'm like, so why is he so needy compared to you? And you're such an asshole. Yes. And he's just like, I am an asshole. <laughs> and I was like, okay, oh so these are the differences. One is wanting other people to be alignment. And the other one is like, my way, we're going to do it my way. And then he like takes his finger and he turns it to me and he's like, if I'm the one that plans, you're a chaos monkey. And I'm like, <laughs> I am. I am kind of a chaos monkey. <laughs> so how does that come out for you? Like, cause I think that like stereotypically, if you were to Google ENTJ, you'd say like, they're always in charge or telling oh, you. Oh, I know. You. So I know. like, how, how are you different than that? Very different. I'm, I'm very weird because I, you would probably like, if you saw me enough, you'd probably type me either as an ESTP or a ESFP. That's probably mm. what you would see. Now it'd be really confusing because you're like, why are you such a, you know, desperate needy EJ, let's say back in the day or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's probably what you would see if you've, what is this, you know? Um, so that's, what's confusing about it. I don't, I have blast as like my last animal blast is mm. just the control. So OI, whether it's NI or SI plus the DE. And that is, you know, F-E or T-E. Those two functions together create the animal action. This is what we call them, animal action of BLAST. BLAST is just sharing known information, making sure that you're prepared so you can give information to the tribe. This is what you do very yeah. well. You <laughs> BLAST and you teach, teach constantly giving your amazing information to the tribe. That's what you are responsible for. Yeah. I have that last. Yeah. And so wanting to teach, the, wanting to talk, I'm just like, I, yeah. I, I'm so not. Do you, or do you feel like even like doing videos with Dave or being interviewed by people that it's more fun for you to sort of use your play? Yes. Sort of go back and forth. Very much so. I love interviews because it's very much a play and I don't mind doing that at all. Cause it's like, you toss me a new question and I'll answer a new question. Yeah. Play is like, you know, double extrovert. So mm -hmm. I love, you know, aligning with the tribe and then also new so of course it's like, let's bounce new information back and forth. That's play. But a lot of our classes and a lot of our Q and A's, I have to get my blast. Like I have mm. to come fully prepared with a, like, you know, cause the OI functions, whether it's NI or SI, they like, they like to create chapters mm -hmm. in the communication. So it's, it's a, it's yes. like, it leads yes. it right from beginning, middle and <laughs> That's so funny because so I do my podcast Synchronic Saturdays with Crystal, who's an ENFP. And before I do it, like I don't really like I'm not an SI person, so I won't like right. literally write it all down. But in my mind, right. I have these little checkpoints of like, we're gonna do yeah. this section, then this, then this. And then it's so hard sometimes to try and direct that with right. the chaos monkey. <laughs> right? People are like, hey, you're always interrupting in your videos. That's so rude. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, are you really an FE Dom if you don't even care and you're interrupting? And I'm like, no, I'm not trying to right. hurt you. I'm trying right. to stay on track. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> there's an order here. That yes. <laughs> or like, it's like my, I guess, sort of control that could come out with that is like, I'm like, oh, well, and it's funny because I know you follow uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, which he's yes. not. He's not blast first, right? No, he's a chaos monkey. Yeah, but he's still <laughs> set, with his masculine FE. I've heard him always say like, I inter or I interrupt people 
because yeah. I'm thinking about what people are wanting me to say. And I'm like, right. that's, exactly what I, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Right, right. You so, guys would have a lot in common. He's, so he's, he's, yeah. he's play blast. So he does have mm-hmm. a lot of like speak energy, like mm-hmm. wants to talk, wants to speak, wants to get out the information. So he does have a lot of that. Your blast play. Mm-hmm. So you have a lot of the wanting to get your information out as well. You're just going to do it in an abstract way that is in chapter and his is like, and this, and this, and this. Just follow me around. (laughs) Yeah, he's got got the SE. Yeah. 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 So I think it could be interesting to kind of talk now about, I guess, masculine TE and masculine FE, because Um, I guess that example of me interrupting my friend because I want to make sure that what I'm saying comes across to people. It's still my right. FE right. and it's still me caring about what people think, right. but it could come across a little bit abrasive. Right. Yes. So <laughs> do you relate to that? <laughs> yes, completely. Yes. Yeah. What's so, what is hard? What was, this is probably one of the harder things for me to like process. Mm-hmm. Yes. It was hard for me to process that I was a censor because that wasn't valued. But like, yeah. really, who cares? Like, I just, that one I got over fairly quick. It was more hard that I was an ENTJ and, and the community didn't like, in my opinion, the community didn't like ENTJs at the time when I cared, oh. you know, I cared back yeah. then. Yeah. And then I, you know, obviously that's something that you're like, oh, who cares? This I mean, I felt that way too. Hard. That's right. kind of why I even started my channels. I was like, everyone's talking about INFJs. Why not right. ENFJs? <laughs> right, right. I'm completely. especially rare too. <laughs> Right. I know. It's so funny too. Like, so, you know, channel change sidetrack. Like when we started yeah. typing, people were like, oh, there's a lot of INFJs. Like they weren't that rare. It wasn't like this a magical thing yeah. that you have to like go to the forest to find or anything. Mm-hmm. They're all over the place. Um, but yeah, it's, it is what it is. There were parts that were harder to process, but I think honestly, the reality is one of the things we've realized the most is there are parts about you that you're embarrassed by. There's parts about you that you like and vice versa with the whole rest of the tribe. So you're going to get hit by things that other people don't like about you and hit by things that you don't like yeah. about you. And it's really just going, okay, am I done yet? Do I want to just process this and get it over with and start getting on board with who I actually am and then balancing what I can? You know, That was kind of like where the journey led over time. And yeah, sure. T E masculine, F E masculine at the top. It's hard for two reasons. Number one, being a female, it's hard. You're seen as this mm-hmm. like very like. Uh, Dave calls me a battle or not battle axe. I call myself a battle axe. He calls me a T X. There it is, a velo- <laughs> velociraptor. And it's like it's just so funny because it's so true. Like okay, yeah. yes, that is me. I'm I'm the T Rex because you're it's, that's where you're solid. So, so easy to come out very like blunt, blunt. It's so, can I just say it without having to flower it? And I think that that's one of the things like, of course, the person's intent, of course, your intent is I want to help my friend. And if they just let me finish my point, I'll help them, you know, like that's where the thought is coming from. And of course, you get it wrong sometimes. We all get it wrong sometimes, but the intent that is there is where the human needs are coming from. And yeah, I think a lot of times where people will mistype someone or misunderstand someone is just that they will read their actions instead of their intent. So in order to really start typing somebody and really start, you know, actually being able to get consistent results, typing people, you have to know where it's coming from. What is someone attempting to do? Oh, I'm just, I I need to share this with you. It's like helping somebody with something that they don't necessarily want. My, my, one of my favorite jokes or analogies is the cat that brings the dead, you know, squirrel and puts it at your feet. (laughs) Oh my God. I I didn't want that. I really don't want that. I don't need that. It's like, yes, but my intent was, this was really hard. (laughs) Here you go. I did it. You know? (laughs) Oh my God. So yeah, I'm curious your thoughts on this, but I think maybe something that we can have in common with the masculine, um, uh, DE, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is that we can maybe be a little bit pushy with yes. our, I guess, love yes. for people and wanting to help. But how would you see, like, for um, feminine EJ or feminine extroverted judging EJs? Are right. they they're going to be less pushy? How would yeah. you explain how they would come off? 
they're very interesting because the anyone who is feminine extroverted decider whether it's savior or demon energy like it's it's really like they're going to try and flower their words with the tribe like everything that comes out they're going to constantly be trying to flower so therefore they'll talk a lot slower because they'll just be like trying to is this going to offend you is this going to offend you oh my god and people think that's fe Right. I know. I know. Some of the feminine TEs do feel very effy. They do. Cause they're, but they're still yeah. going after figuring out, making it work, looking at it logically and without emotion. Yeah. They're trying to solve some kind of, you know, think of like a Rubik's cube. They're trying to solve a problem, wanting to fix it and going after something block wise, making sense. I want to fix this for this person. Yes. I need to give them a tool to fix it. So, so it's like they yeah. feel the same sometimes, but doing very different things. Yeah. So I, my business partner for my digital marketing, branding sort of stuff, I'm almost positive. I know she's an ENFJ, but I'm almost okay. positive that she's feminine FE and feminine okay. SE. And oh my goodness. It, so we wanted to get out of this contract because of the coronavirus. It, it right. was just for, for me, I looked at it and I'm like, well, this is no longer valid. <laughs> I, 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 but like when we both talked about it to the person that we were trying to get out of the contract, the feminine right. Effie was like, I just want to say, I really <laughs> love this opportunity. Blah, blah. Like, I, I was like, Oh my God. And I was like, Hey, no hard feelings. These right. dates are wrong. Can we just come back to when the dates are right? And I almost <laughs> felt like I was like, I wonder if that was like my, my masculine S E too. Right. Yes. Probably. Like, hey, the dates are wrong. Can we just like loop around when this is over? Like right. I wasn't like trying to be rude or whatever, but <laughs> right. in my mind, I was like, this is simple. But right. Like, when my, um, my ENFJ, but opposite gendered friend was like, I had a dream and I realized that there was a reason why this happened. <laughs> and now I realize the new path we're going and I need to figure out this new path before I can even push on this sensing. And I was like, right. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think about right. that yet. Right. Right. So Very feminine with all of it. Yeah. It really can just come off so differently. So right. it's completely. Yeah. yeah. That one's, it's surprising that the, you know, you could have the same exact function, but it's yeah. one is going to be steering differently. Like uh, Oprah would be a really good example for you to compare to because Oprah and you are the exact same type. Uh-huh. So she, She's an ENFJ. She's also blast, play, sleep, which is what I think oh, you are. Yeah, blast, yeah. play, sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's audio. And what that means is that she has masculine sensory, feminine and I, just like you do. But then she has the feminine and Effie at the top. So all oh. of her wording is going to be like flowers and let's Wait, see. Wait, oh, it. that makes Often so much sense. <laughs> right. And that portion or the auditory all that things you or what am I saying all of that that you I guess is associated with the functions is so true for me because I'm such an auditory learner right yeah and that was so how did you guys just um I guess to loop it back to people who don't know what this is I know so um, many parts I'm trying to like uh, limit (laughs) I know I'm like oh I'm trying to string one goes into the next like oh there goes this one Yeah. How did you guys discover, I guess, the associations with the functions and whether you're a visual or auditory person? That one came last Mm -hmm. or I feel like the third or fourth animal came last, but Mm -hmm. that was one that I kept shoving away. I was like, nope, doesn't relate. Nope, doesn't relate. Nope, doesn't relate because it was was one of those things where I was just like, no. And it's interesting because it lays on top of the functions. You know, it, it wasn't one that like you could have thinking versus feeling where that's a binary coin and one connects to the other, you know, like mm-hmm. those will always be united or you have a introverted decider, whether they're FI or TI or an extroverted decider, whether they're FE or TE, those will always be a binary coin and those were always mm-hmm. going to be connected. Well, the masculine feminine, it just is like clothing on top of all of them. And so that's what's interesting is that you could have somebody that has feminine FI and you can have somebody that has feminine FE. Now, of course, it has to be the opposite. If they have feminine FI, they have to have masculine TE. So there's, you know, the binary coin there. 
but where is the modality thing? Why did that connect? You know, but of course, everybody is seeing patterns all over the place. And it makes sense to me that they're all constantly pulling in and connecting. It's like, yeah, they, they, they ultimately did end up connecting because what we're starting to see is that, oh, if you have masculine sensory, you're going to be more on the side of like kinesthetic learning, auditory learning, because you're going to be more like the physical universe sensing is going to be more like blocks that are going to smash together and, you know, physical universe smash. And then therefore there is sounds and just the kinesthetic weight and feel of the heaviness of the, the sensing, right? Yeah. Well, then there's feminine sensory, which is the opposite of that. It's like, movable, movable with all of the sensory. And unfortunately, that means all of us that are very movable with all of that sensory, we forget sensory all the time, completely forget it, can't remember anything. Now I can visually paint a picture for you, what I did back when I was a kid, but like, can't remember the person's name unless I saw it written on something, can't remember when it was. I could have been anywhere from like five to like 14, just just can't remember, you know? So it's mm -hmm. fascinating when you start adding the masculinity to something that it holds, yeah. it has that solidity to it. Mm -hmm. So with someone like you and Dave, even though you have demon SE, because it's masculine, it's going to be able to hold on to data in some kind of like kinesthetic timeline where dates yeah. and times will fit before and after. I don't have that kind of timeline with my sensing. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like I'm not very comfortable with the sensing, but whenever I do know something or remember something, I'll get I'll be adamant about it. Yeah, right, there you so, go. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yep. So I want to talk to you a little bit about how, because um, you mentioned like as especially for us as women, as EJ women with yeah. masculine as right. our savior, that right. could be a little abrasive for people or a little bit weird for people. Yes. I'm wondering, uh, since our since I have masculine feeling and you have feminine feeling, yeah, <laughs> do, how does that come up for you? Like, do you ever feel like in like a situation where you're supposed to be professional that sometimes your emotions, <laughs> yes, you, you don't because like for me, completely. Or I guess I'll let you respond to that though. No, no, please tell me your <laughs> well, I'll just say what I was gonna say though is that it's so weird. Like even though I'm an ENFJ. And I enjoy having like a warm environment with people I work mm -hmm. with and stuff. Like my emotions are so solid. Yes. Where like if I like for example, I've been having all these Zoom <laughs> meetings with coworkers, which I already work from home anyway. But right. since every since the world is crazy, people are kind of sticking around to chat and be like, oh, "Ooh, yeah. I'm having some whiskey tonight," <laughs> and they're like just trying to joke around and like. I have a right. hard time, even though I want to establish a rapport with people, yeah. my emotions are like, I'm here to work. Right. <laughs> and sometimes I feel like if I, okay, like if I'm not feeling it, then I don't know how to make my face like oh, look yeah. like I'm laughing or enjoying right. it. And so right. I don't know if that's like a masculine yes. <laughs> feeling thing, but like sometimes I'm like, I don't want to have a resting bitch face. Like I want... <laughs> <laughs> like I truly am not amused. And so how am I supposed right. to like pretend like I'm amused? Right. That's really good. That's really, really I good. <laughs> yeah. I, so, so first I'll start off with like, when I see the masculine feeling, of course, grass is greener, right? Like grass is always greener. I really admire it. And I am like, Oh, I wish I had that. <laughs> Especially savior because it's like, yeah, emotions. When you have the emotions going, whether you're savior or demon with the emotions, it's, it's like it completely fills your body with the chemicals and you get clouded brain. Like if you have a rush of them all at once. Now, if you're savior feeling, you have a constant flow of that kind of chemicals that you're managing and adjusting, managing and adjusting, managing and adjusting. Oh, that person's sad. Okay, let me adjust. Okay, that person's happy. Okay, let me adjust. And, but like for you, if you have masculine feelings, it's not going to be like adjust fast, swoosh, 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 chemicals moving fast. It's going to be more of a like, solid. Okay. Let me turn that on. Okay. Let me turn that off. Yeah. It'll just feel a little bit more like and Dave wow. calls his cause he's got masculine FI. He, he calls it like a laser beam that he can like slowly move. <laughs> so it's like, wow. okay, there I got it. It's harder to move. It just feels like it's heavier, you know? 
Well, I feel like I am surrounded by several feminine FE, like FJ friends. Cause yeah. I mean, I had a friend even that was like, I don't know what to do because it's my birthday and I want to go to this concert, but it doesn't seem like my boyfriend wants to go. And I was like, well, why don't you just say, Hey, it's my birthday. And this is what I want to do. And she was like, she was like, that's what I would say if I knew that that's what I felt. And so she's like, she's like, I no. relate to that. She's like, no, it's not that simple. It's not that I'm afraid to tell my right. boyfriend what I think. It's that right. because he doesn't, She's like, I wouldn't want to go if he wouldn't have a good time. If he time. doesn't want to do it either. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, like for absolutely. me, I feel like I know what I want to do on my birthday. Right. And like, so, but the way my FE can come out is like, if I know I want to do something on my birthday and I can tell my friends don't want to, then I can't right. unplug from those feelings and I just right. end up feeling alone and upset. But right. Right. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but see, somebody like you might be able to actually plan something out that yeah. might work for everyone. I don't know. Like, would yeah. you be able to still do something like that? Like, I want to do this, yeah. but they don't want to do that. I'll probably end up doing whatever they want to do. Is that kind yeah. of what you know? I've had some awkward birthdays, especially like 22 and 23 are awkward, awkward birthdays because right. it's like, I want it to be fun, like college, but it's not. And I, <laughs> I've done like a few like things where I will say, all right, this is a party. Everyone come over if you right. want to. And I guess I trust that if people don't want to, they just won't come and that's on that's them. Yeah. Right. But sometimes they, there is just awkwardness of like people don't know each other or right. then I'm like, well, it's my birthday. I don't want to have to do this. But like, then I do it anyway. And then I'm right. like, <laughs> worried about trying to make everyone happy. Totally. <laughs> I yeah. Know. I relate to so much of that. Cause obviously yeah. there's a lot of like just straight DE there of like tribe universally has yeah. to be happy before <laughs> I'm allowed to be happy. Yeah. So like universal DE. Like that's what all the DEs do. Like everybody else is a priority above me. And that's what, like, mm -hmm. it's like a lot of times we'll cause problems because we'll make everybody above us. The weird thing about that is that not everybody's opinion agrees. And that's where the, the mm -hmm. each really freak out because, oh no, everyone doesn't agree. Now what do I do? Cause like, yeah. how do you get a consensus? Sometimes it doesn't work out. So in rare situations like that, birthdays, yeah, I like it, it's it's really about for all of us that are DEs is just choosing to own absolutely what we want and then finding a way to get our needs met while also making other people happy. And that's like the hardest thing in the world for the EJ, hardest thing in the world. Yeah, but that's that is still the answer. And it's like, okay, if you could come out and be like all right, tribe, I know you all want to do something random and different, but tonight, this is my birthday. I want to make myself happy. You're welcome to join me. If nobody comes, I'm going to still choose my yeah. joy. I'm not going to like stop being joyful just because the tribe didn't give me permission to have joy. And that's like, yes. it's so hard, but that's the only answer. That's the only yeah, answer. That's something I've really been working on a lot lately is like, how do you unplug and decide to feel right. joy. Well, I mean, right. that's really hard to do. It's right. like if you, I don't know, especially during a time where there's so much uncertainty in so many people's lives. And I feel unbelievably lucky that mm. I'm even able to work from home and all this stuff. It's right. very hard to mm. unplug from that. Um, I was going to ask you, I guess. So we're talking a lot about the EJ thing and caring about the tribe. Yeah. In what way would you say that Maybe you have tried to make everyone happy, but you've done it with like just TE and you've like forgotten completely about the FE and it right. has ended up making the tribe unhappy or like, right. what, what does that look like for you? That's really good. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I feel very much like I want the tribe to be happy. Like I would absolutely tell you, like, of course I want people to be happy. Like that's sort of the intent. Like the goal is people are happy, but my way of, of gaining happiness. So like, let's say this is the, you know, the marker tribe happy. I like take a side road to try and make mm -hmm. the tribe happy. I don't just go straight for like giving joy. Like I won't just give smiles, give hugs, give joy to try and make the tribe happy. That's not a, a natural default wiring to be like, oh, I know. I just need to laugh with them. Oh, I know. I need to just hug with them. Oh, I know. I need to just smile and cry with them. That's not a default wiring in me as a yeah. TE, as a thinker. Even though 
that's what my destination is. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. So I'll just go this way and I will make something work for the tribe. And if I get stuck in this loop, I, I will lose sight of people being happy and I will be banging the blocks endlessly. So it'll be like, I'm doing my job. I'm doing very, very task oriented, doing the job, doing, you know, it's like you could think of, of the typical Myers-Briggs, the way that they even like define an ISTJ. It's like, it seems like they could like see a sliver of like the TE in that task doing, getting things fixed, working things out. You know, like for me, it's very much like pragmatic type stuff because I am technically, I'm an ST. So I do want to fix mm -hmm. things. Oh, I'll fix the technology. I'll fix the computers. Oh, I'll build a server. Oh, I'll fix our phones. Oh, I'll, I'll get the network working. Mm -hmm. All of that kind of like pragmatic, practical things. Okay. So what happens though, if you're just so all in on doing that and you lose sight of, for me, my own FI priorities. So I'm like losing yeah. sight of like, hey, is this even something I should be working on right now? I emotionally Ooh. am not even paying attention to this isn't what I should be working on. This project should have gotten dropped days ago because it's now past its expending energy rate. And everyone around me is trying to give me frowny faces to let me know with their F, with their feelings, they're not happy. And I'm like, I'm almost done. I'll, I, I'll get it and I'll just over the top fix stuff without even caring about the emotions. Yeah. So something that I've observed, I'm curious if you agree, but it seems as though like for TE and FI that you're very aware of like this thing is causing this emotion where it's like, oh, if I were to design this thing or get this job done, then that would, I guess, move these other blocks and then the result would be happiness, but nice. it's, and so like you're, you know how like the outer world might affect you. And so you're going to do this thing over here that might right. affect in a good way where for me, I guess to compare to that, I feel like I don't trust myself to fix the problems, but I, right. I can help people um, think about it differently or right. feel more joy while they are right. I guess, doing it. And, um, so it's really hard for me to even know or trust that I, if I were to solve something or do something that it would work and that that is what would solve the problem. It's almost right. like, and some of it could be helping people, I guess, cope with the problems that you could never solve. Right. Right. But I think for my inferior TI, what can happen is, so when you said you lose sight of priorities, I think for me, I a big thing for me is I need to um, trust my own discernment of like, is this even a problem that is worth, I guess, thinking about? Like right. maybe this problem is so unsolvable that I'm wasting my emotional energy interesting. with it. Right. Interesting. So for example, with certain friends, maybe they are getting like, for example, something that happens to me a lot is like, let's say a friend has like this limiting belief that is getting them stuck in the same problem time and time again. And I will offer the emotional support every time they fall. Right. But if they aren't changing or if I don't know like what advice to give them to solve their problem so that they never have it again, then right. I can get in this wheel of just offering FE. Totally. Right. So, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And then I get really burnt out and I'm like, well, right. I'm helping you so much. Why don't you realize it? Right. <laughs> right. So what is that like for you when you get to that point where you're like, I'm helping all of you guys. Hello. <laughs> like, right. Um, That's so good. That's really good. So what you're talking about there, mm -hmm. it's so naturally all of us want to be able to deliver our saviors. And for me, like one of the things that really started helping me change my heart, actually um, build on like some things that actually moved me forward instead of my own self spinning in circles is I had to start telling myself, hey, TE is not real. It's not mm. real. They don't need my help. Nobody needs to be helped. Nobody mm. needs healthy helper 10. They don't need help because wow. I'm realizing that I'm getting so much out of this game of help, 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 that I lose sight of what are we actually trying to accomplish 
Like what, mm. where is the goal? Where's the end point? What leads us out of here? Because we're now just spinning in circles, burrowing, burrowing a hole in the middle of a forest, very much lost. And so if you want to get out of that game, because that's just a savior function game where you just chase your own tail. Spinning I'm realizing in circles. another parallel here is it's like you are, you think, uh, or I guess without consciously looking at it, you, your TE thinks that the more you do, the more, I guess, FI validation you'd get. Yes, right. Right. Where yes. I think for me, I want to be useful. Yes. I, it's like, I want people to be like, wow, thank you. That solved something for me. Or like, right. <laughs> you right. know? Yes. And completely. I, from hearing you talk, I'm reminded of uh, my ESTJ uncle is most likely masculine TE. I'm not sure, but mm. he does, he has this saying where he always is like offering to like uh, fix someone, like build a new bathroom for you or build a porch right. for you. Or like right. literally my, my mom is at ESFJ and we, a few years back, my grandma who had cancer was living with us oh, yeah. and my ESTJ uncle's like, Hey, let me go in and fix the bathroom for you. Right. My mom's like, no, no, no. My mom's yeah. like, no, I'm literally helping someone with cancer. I do not right. need this bathroom fixed. He's like, let me just do it. It'll be so quick. Right. And my mom's like, no, I need my space. Like, get out of here. Like, I don't need it. <laughs> right. And then right. he like comes in like without asking and like is like solving, like fixing it. And it's like, oh my God. Yes. But see, like he's just wanting to help. He's just wanting to make it easier. But right. like he didn't even realize that it's like right. not the emotional environment, not the time. That, <laughs> that. exactly. Yeah. Because like, let's say every project or every problem, every problem that you're trying to solve, let's say there's eight buckets okay mm -hmm. and all each of the eight one of the eight buckets is a function and mm -hmm. what we will do with our two favorite saviors is just keep grabbing a pitcher and pouring into our favorite two functions and the project is like okay great thank you for the help in these very important two functions <laughs> can you start filling up some of the other ones because we need all of these buckets to be filled. Yes. That's what's so hard is we want to run in and this is what everybody does. This goes, this goes back to the, you know, the cat bringing in a dead squirrel. It's like, look what I did. And it's like, thank you for the dead squirrel. <laughs> we also need clean carpets. That was not very helpful in that department. You just, I want to yeah. come in and I want to fill up only these two buckets. And then they're just overflowing. Look, we have enough TE. Thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> amazing. We have enough FE. Thank you for all of the caring. Let's go fill up some of the other buckets. I think that what you're saying and how you're talking about this right now is really good in the sense that if you want to know how to talk to yourself, I think that it's like, hey, you can be nice to your savior. Like, hey, thank you. <laughs> yeah, <Good> yeah. Job. <laughs> <laughs> right. Great. Right. Appreciate it. Anyways, we need some help oh over gosh. here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And like hearing what you were saying, how you had to almost tell yourself like, hey, people don't need your TE right. help. Right. I've had to do something similar where I guess like I've had to tell myself like, it's not my job to anticipate anyone's needs. And if they really cared, they would tell me. Right. <laughs> like, right. and right. if I, and I even had to do, and there's this, uh, uh, Amanda Flaker on YouTube is a spiritual abundance teacher that I watch sometimes she okay. made the suggestion once where she said that you should tell your partners and your loved ones you should say hey from now on I'm not going to anticipate your emotions and I trust that we have this sort of relationship where if I'm ever bothering you you'll let me know That's cool. and saying that felt I, I tried that right. <laughs> saying that feels like almost like breaking this unsaid like curse almost that yes. I was doing to myself right it was never them Right. <laughs> right. That's why it's not real. Like, yeah. Wait, right. Is this isn't coming from you. Like, no. Yes. And it's like, I've done it. It's like, I do it to myself. Right. Because it's my own self-importance needing right. to be that one to do it. So I guess the last thing, or I really wanted to discuss too with you is that we both have our inferior feminine, uh, function, yeah. uh, and it's an identity function. And right. I think that when we have our little EJ tidal waves, these things can come out and people might even be shocked by what they see. 
uh, with, right. I mean, I don't know, I'm sure that's true with all types, but I all, almost want to say with EJs, with masculine savior. Oh, it's intense. It's, and, it's like if you have one of those yeah. like weighted things, it's one that just really is pretty heavy on one side and then very light on the yeah. other. Yeah, I mean, would you intense. say that the tidal waves are more noticeable with people like us or? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the extrovert even, tidal waves. Yeah. Like my friend who's uh, my business partner, ENFJ, who I believe is feminine FE, when I was yeah. talking to her about this, she was like, I don't understand. She's like, how does that work though that you know my masculine is so weak she's like right. i guess for me it's like oh i'm protecting this little baby right and it kind of makes sense but i don't know where right. i'm going with that well that's really good so for mm -hmm. you and i so we can talk about two different things there let's, let's yeah. first let's first hit the the masculine versus feminine extroverted cider and then the masculine versus feminine yeah. extroverted cider. we call it dog energy or cat energy and the oh. way that we define there you go yes, <laughs> I'm such a dog. and i got that real fast oh, okay. yeah. dog energy is the masculine extroverted decider so think of like you know almost like a chihuahua like bark 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 bark, bark. it's like barking <laughs> all the time so it's getting out it's in masculine energy because it's just like a like a machine gun like da -da 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 -da, getting out all the masculine energy right mm -hmm. those that have the masculine di they're constantly trying to do this, avoid fight, avoid fight, avoid fight, just like a cat. Avoid, 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 avoid. And then when you back them into a corner, it's like oh. cat claw and it's the most <sighs> intense all at once. Just swipe, if, if they have to come out of their corner, you're in trouble. Like you're, oh, you're wow. gonna get yeah, you're so right. So it's like, <laughs> it is an energy thing, but like you go to push on the dog and they're like, please let her, Please, I'm sorry. Oh I'm my really God. <laughs> I'm very yeah. tough on the outside, but on the inside, I'm I'm not so tough. Yeah, realizing like literally, my partner and two my two best friends all are cats, <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen I've seen that before, and right. I'm always so shocked. I'm like, hey, like we could have prevented this or something. Right. Like, right, very much so. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, you and I want to bark all day long, but there's not a whole lot behind the bark. Look, I'm fine. Well, I'm adjustable. I'm movable. Me, my DI is movable. Just tell me. Just tell me. But we're, like, coming out like this. Just tell me. Just tell me. Yes. Like, so, <laughs> like, no thanks. <laughs> like, I've had people tell me, and I don't know if you relate to this or if this is different because uh, it's a thinking, it's an inferior, what am I saying? It's a feminine thinking thing. But I've had right. people tell me that they think based on how I talk, that I'm very firm in what I think about things and that like I won't change them, which couldn't be further from the truth. Right. Like exactly. if anyone were to disagree with me, like unless I have already thought about it before and predicted what they would say and already whatever, if right. someone like has a new thought that I've never considered, it feels almost like um, I don't think anything anymore. Like I have to completely... Right start from scratch right I completely so, understand yeah like with typology for example I've been studying this for a while but like with all the different discussions of like uh objective personality versus socionics right. versus all these things like right. I feel like I think something and then someone tells me something else I'm like wait I don't know what I think anymore right like, you get conflicted and yeah so yeah. like I share what I think along the journey on my channel but at the end of the day, I'm literally so open to what I think. And Completely. I guess that doesn't always come across. I don't know. Right. Like, right. It's kind of weird. <laughs> I, I, I completely understand. And I think that that's where a lot of times, especially the masculine DEs, especially masculine DE at the top are, are very, you know, I don't, I hate saying this is so annoying, but like they do get very misunderstood because they're, yeah. you're seeing you're seeing the paint job that doesn't quite relate with, you know, the inside of the car, let's say. Yeah. So yeah, that's very, very much, it happens all the time. You would never know that if you ever pushed on somebody like Tony Robbins or even Gary Vee, that he would quickly fold and be like, no, yeah. I understand. Like they're very movable on the inside as well. Just, you don't see that from the outside because all you're hearing is the machine gun side of the person, not yeah. realizing that that means that is a counter and that means that there is a softer side on the inside. And I've even heard, you know, some psychology talk about it, like, oh, that might be, you know, something wrong. There's a, some, yeah. some sort of a disorder there. And it's like, no, this is extremely normal. This is super normal. Yeah. Technically, kind of the way we see it, it's like everyone has 
slight disorder because you're all you're like leaning one way not the other and any time that you can get more balanced of course it's going to be something that you can manage in the outside world for me one thing that has been helpful mm -hmm. is getting really comfortable sharing my feminine side so like you know even when i come out on my videos it's it's like people are like you're laughing all the time sometimes i even show myself crying in some of the classes like yeah. that's pretty like, you know, I'm showing constantly. My goal is to show even myself being mad. Like that's hard for me. Like, I don't want people yeah. to see me mad. Like that's negative. I don't want anybody like, I'm going to try and make sure I'm pulling up that function as much as humanly possible. And when somebody says, I don't like you because of that part of you, I go, I'm so glad I'm getting this mental workout because this is like really yeah. important for me to be congruent and pull up the two sides of myself. Yes, I have this extremely like news reporter, logical brain, logic side that has zero emotion, but I also have this side of myself that is feminine, the, the feeling, it just moves, it's constantly swooshing. Uh, if I see somebody else crying, I start crying. Oh my gosh, isn't that effy? No, just my own <sighs> internal feelings. I don't have... Like I can't see it very well and I don't have a lot of control over it because it's feminine. Yeah. So that's something, yeah. I think it could confuse people too because most people with your type uh, right. do not show that side. Right, so, exactly. And I guess I just want to say I think you're incredibly brave and I feel like to, to do that, like um, people – People might, might not realize how hard that is, I guess. Oh, right, right, completely. For an ENTJ right. to share that. Right. <laughs> and I know, like, I don't know, there's clearly so much FI there that is not normally shown. So it's like, when you show it, people don't know, I guess. They don't know that's hard. That's yeah. such a good point. That's a yeah. really, really good point. Yeah. And even for me, when I try and share what my opinion is, like on my channel or whatever I'm, oh. I'm doing, yeah. Like, it's so hard for me. Like, and they don't know. They're like, that's yeah. okay. Today I'm going to share my opinion. I'm going to share you. Like, and everyone's like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. If it's not their demon, yeah. you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. That's and so I good. I feel like for both of us with EJ and masculine DE, I think that we can maybe come off very untouchable to people yeah, yeah. of like, oh yeah, they're confident. They know what they're doing. And it's very like, much so. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm literally such a baby inside like right. I don't know right yes and I also would it's interesting what you were saying about the some psychologists almost making it out as though it's a problem right <laughs> You're um, the <laughs> so a couple of things on that is one thing that I do think that I've had to work on is that before knowing about all of this I think that I just would always take the mic as though the mic was up for grabs. And I assumed that anyone could do that at any time. Right. So, so I never even viewed myself as, I guess, a strong personality or right. getting in anyone's way because I just figured, oh, well, they would take the mic if it was their turn. If they, if they could. Wanted to. Totally. Right. So, right. but I don't know, like, I don't feel like it is unhealthy or wrong in any way whenever I'm, it's like, it's not like I'm intentionally using FE in order to protect TI. Oh, I know. Yeah. It, I it's know. just like I'm spitballing. Like I'm Completely. just literally saying what's on my mind. And right. I'm sure you feel that way too. It's not like you're so afraid of anyone realizing the real FI and you're going to like right. have this armor <laughs> and be like, hey, like you aren't right. like doing that. Right. Completely. Know. Yeah. It's just the default wiring. We just do what comes natural. Yeah. And <laughs> Another thing on that that I've been thinking about lately that I think might have to do with my demon function, let me know if this makes sense to you, is that okay. whenever I am afraid that someone will judge me for, some, for something, right. I have to then tell myself, well, you should judge them for judging you. Right. That's the natural fears coming out to protect. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Right. And so, but I think that what I used to do is think, well, I'm not going to do this thing or say this thing because someone because, might judge me right. for this thing Right. where I feel like I don't have to judge a person in a negative way or like in a judgmental way, but like my TI, for example, like, let's say if I want to share an unpopular opinion, okay. Yeah. Um, I might 
think, what if someone says this? Then my TI needs to be, I guess, more proactive of like, well, if they say this, then I would then criticize them in this way, or like I would judge right. them for this. Right. You're like planning so, out how to win the argument, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think that it makes me less makes me feel less responsible. Like it almost feels wrong or manipulative to even say that out loud, but I actually think it's healthy for me. And I don't know if that makes sense. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I know. I know exactly what you're talking about. And it it Mm -hmm. is coming from, especially the EJs will do this. Every type does this, but like, Uh so you and I were deciders. We're single deciders. Mm -hmm. We have one of our deciders at the top. So either IJs or or IPs or EJs will do this. So we're going to be constantly staring at the people and constantly staring at the order of the tribe. Where am I at? in the order of the tribe. And for us EJs, we love to throw ourselves all the way at the bottom, even though no one else is doing that. We want to make sure everybody is fairsies, everybody is equalsies. If I get above you, that means that you think I'm better than you and I don't want you to think I'm better than you. Let me yes. lower myself. Oh my gosh. That's a really good point. And people can perceive EJs as wanting like the control so that they're on top. And right. I hate being I know. I, I hate I know. if anyone even like puts me on a pedestal or like worships it's, or like, uh, yep. Ew, I'm it's like, uncomfortable. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's the pyramid. Here's the pedestal. This yeah. is the DI at the top. This is what, you know, this is where it's comfortable. Like I want other people to look up to me and be respect. That's what your DI is going to want. Now everybody has a DI, whether you have it at the top or you have it at the bottom, you have TI at the bottom, me too. So naturally the EJs are going to throw themselves down at the bottom. Well, what happens mm-hmm. if somebody starts arguing with you and telling you you're dumb? Mm-hmm. Now, what do you do? Yeah. Well, if somebody argues with me and I'm all the way down here, that means I'm off. I might get thrown off. I might get excommunicated. I might be told yeah. I'm worthless. I have zero worth. I am not, I'm not knowledgeable. I have zero, u- I'm useless. Mm-hmm. That's a great fear. You know, mm-hmm. demon TI, useless, fear of being useless, fear of somebody telling me I'm dumb. The greatest yeah. fear of demon TI you ever could ever have. So yes. that just so why are you coming up with all these arguments where is that coming from well naturally from your brain wiring my brain wiring as well is that if you're down here and somebody says that idea you know how dare you have a ti idea by the way that's what your brain wiring is telling you how dare you come up with an opinion that might go against the tribe yes oh my god for aligning with the tribe 24 7 and you come up with an opinion that might put you either below or above the tribe that's terrifying. And a lot of times what the EJs will do is if somebody disagrees with them, they'll go to another tribe and make sure they can get a whole bunch of other people on their side. And, uh, you know, so-and-so said this, and this important person said this, and this important person said this about now I have all of this other tribe connectivity yeah. to where I can come after you and I can beat you with that opinion. That gives me the authority. Yes. It's not for me. I have it from the tribe and therefore you can't kill me off. I literally, okay. it's impossible for me to, well, I'm getting better at it, but it's virtually impossible for me to think something that is different from everyone else without at least chatting it over with a few close friends or something. Or like, let's say if I get into a disagreement and it's not even that I want to be right, but it's just like, Hey, tell me where I'm wrong here. Like, I feel like I need to like, be like, am I onto something? Am I not onto something? Am I completely wrong? Right, right. And maybe that's an EJ thing that I don't know if people realize what goes on behind the scenes is, do you, I don't know right. if you do this, but for me, I have my friends that I'm like going back and forth with of like, am I right? Am I wrong? Right, right. What is yes. going on here? Right. And you're, I think the natural fear of every DE is just, mm-hmm. it's a fear of standing alone. It is absolutely yeah. a fear of just being okay with your DI going against the whole tribe. And honestly, like for me, one of the things that has really helped me over the years is going, okay, let me chase that down. Let me go all the way to the end. Let me play out that scenario all the way to the end. So let's say I'm standing on my DI because DI is subjective. Who cares if you're wrong? It's your opinion. Who cares, right? You're not even trying. You're not trying to get the tribe on board. Now you're doing the DE thing and now you're not allowed to have your DI again. Whoops, messed it up again. So now you go back to your opinion and you're like, great. So having this opinion makes me more of a person. I'm more whole. 
I have somewhere I'm standing on this planet. Mm -hmm. If I have zero opinion, I am no one. I am whoever anyone else wants me to be. Therefore, I don't exist. Yeah. Okay, because I want to exist and because I truly do want to help other people, I better have an opinion and I better start honing in that opinion. Yeah. So I better start using it more. Okay, great. Now when you play that out though, you offend half the people on the planet. Yeah. Okay, so now it's getting to the point where you're like, I'd rather offend half the people on the planet because the ones that are left will be true connections because they'll see yeah. me for who I really am. I'd rather have true connections than no connections whatsoever and yeah. offend a few people. That's okay. It's yeah. hard, but that helps. I feel like for me, I never even care to get people on my side logically. Right. Like I just want to be allowed to have my opinion without right. people mm -hmm. yelling at me. Right. So, <laughs> I don't know how you feel about that. Cause like you probably would want to Mine's be the opposite. people of your yes. thinking. <laughs> yes. So yeah. how does that work for you with your inferior right. FI then? Right. I, I don't want to tell other people how to feel. I don't want other people to tell me how to feel. I don't necessarily need to align with anybody if they don't like something. I'm like, that's fine. We just don't have to be friends if you don't like pizza, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm okay with us not liking the same thing. I'm teasing. But like, yeah. but when it comes to logic, that is my that is my addiction. You know, the saviors yeah. are like an addiction. That is my addiction. If somebody disagrees with my logic, I'm like, but you're wrong, but you're wrong, but it's mm. wrong. I need to show you how you're wrong. And it's like, yeah. I have to like hold back from, you know, this is what will keep the TEs up all night. I mean, most logic I think have a really hard time with this, but the TE tends to be pretty intense. It just keeps you up all night arguing, banging blocks, Nope. See, that doesn't make sense because this fits like this and this makes sense like this and these all. It's like, a, it's like a puzzle where you're trying to fit things that work. And when they work, it's, it's like it snaps into place and it locks. Just do you have an internal monologue? Yes. Okay. I do not. So that makes sense to me. Yeah. Like not at all. Like I right. have to form, I have to think about, I, I like my NI sitting on a concept and I right. don't know how I want to explain it. And right. then I'll like tune into you and be like, what do you think she wants right. to hear? <laughs> or, like, or like, how can I explain really this good. in a way that will land well emotionally? Right. Really but good. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. So cool. Cause I think like, and I made a video about this once before about how I do not care to convince anyone of anything. Right. Like I really don't. Right. Like, I feel like I trust that people could go on their own journey and that I think if you're wrong, right. then the world will just smack you in the head because it won't work so right, right so yeah like even just for example like I'm vegetarian and sometimes okay. I don't even talk about it because if people try and argue with me I really don't care like I'm just like right. as long as you respect the fact that this is what I'm doing with my life that's fine like you that's can look it up if you want like I right. so like and maybe this is just like a, a bad TE thing on my part and I don't recognize TE's desire for this but I really hate when people like start arguments with me yeah <laughs> I'm sure like if a TE person thought that I was wrong they would want to just inform me to be nice or something. <laughs> right or TI I mean literally both True. the TEs or the TIs will be like nope more yeah. TI than anything because it's like I'm gonna stand very strongly on my own opinion the TEs yeah will go along probably in person and then probably <laughs> what will keep them up at night they'll be like I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. <laughs> but in person, they'll probably be like, that's one idea, you know, because they'll, yeah. we're very sloppy with ideas, you know, but the TIs, they're more yeah. precise. With and it's ideas. interesting because it's like, so I do want to influence people emotionally. I want people to be happy, right. but yeah. I don't really care how they get there. They could do that, right. whatever they want. And it's yes. funny because the reason why I would say that I want to influence that is because I would say that that's the thing that influences me and influences everyone else. Because you can't go. you see that if you aren't happy or if you aren't working on your emotions, that that's the thing that's ruining everyone else. Right. Whereas like for you, you probably think, well, you're going to let you know when you're wrong because that's the thing that's going to impact everyone, right? Right. You won't be happy if you're, if you're off because this tool is so important. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, very much. Interesting. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah I go after the tool. Yeah. So that's you... what helps bang the blocks. And if you get 
things working better than you're happier, you know, that's definitely. Do you think that you can respect just whatever people feel because, uh, do you think that it doesn't influence the tribe as much? I mean, obviously, you know, the FE exists, but. Yeah, right. I have to learn that though. I have to learn the emotional game. Like mm -hmm. I know, I, and it's funny because I'll, I'll realize that I'm in very much like just robot mode most of the day. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have to like, be like, oh, um, let me just go smile and hug my family to make sure they feel good. Cause I've just been doing things in very robot mode and I have to like wake up to other people's emotions. Do you think that that comes from your, just your own FI realizing that you want to or? No, cause I, <laughs> yes. I mean, obviously my <laughs> I check in there. I'm like, of course I want emotional connection. It's like, oh, then why aren't you doing that all day? Of course yeah. I want that. But like my brain isn't checking in there. Like the savior functions, you're just, it's just, it feels oh like, God. it feels like being drugged up on these two pathways. That's what everybody's doing. Just they're choosing their saviors, you know? So but you and Dave are so productive working I know. together then. Right. Working at a uh, remote, or now that my INFJ partner is working from home, with me it's literally mm -hmm. every like there are times when it's like literally every 20 minutes a hug a kiss a let's right. get distracted let's right. talk about something where right. it's like I don't know like I we literally cannot stop like right. it's so annoying but <laughs> like, that's good know. that's a lot of love but see you do need all of that chemicals flowing because if you yeah. don't have the chemicals flowing then like when you go to do the work, this is what I've had to learn. Yeah. This is a learned lesson. This isn't something that I, you know, uh, it's not default wiring. It's the work doesn't flow. It doesn't happen unless you put in, again, let's go back to the buckets. Like, unless I put a pitcher of bucket in all of the chemicals, chemicals, meaning the emotional chemicals, the feeling side, uh, you can't do the work. You can't get it done. Yes. When you go to get the work done, it doesn't flow. You know, you miss the vibe. If you're off on your vibe, you're not going to be doing well. Yeah, that's why I like when an uncomfortable emotion comes up for me, I feel like I literally need to handle it now or else right. I'm not going to be able to get work done. And so yeah. I'm still focused on the result, but it's very mess. Like it's very hard for me to come up with a system that makes sense for me. Yeah. Like every yeah. single day is different. Like as far as being productive, it's so hard. Like right. I, I do end up getting it done, but I don't know really how I work. Yeah. Interesting. That's interesting. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. So I think before we wrap this up, I want to talk a little bit about burnout because this is yeah. something that has one. been <laughs> huge, huge for me. I'm, I'm realizing that it's not just a figure of speech. It's not an excuse for me to be like, Hey, I'm burnt out. Like right. I've been even looking up like the psychological signs of burnout. And I'm like, Oh yeah, that's pretty much me. It's like, I'm right. pretty much always, um, stretching myself thin right. or who knows what. And I want to know if your experience with that or any, I guess, tips for EJs, um, right. dealing with that. Right. Let's see, both you and I have what we call play above sleep. And that's the mm -hmm. two extroverted functions working together. Yeah. Um, above sleep, which is the two introverted functions working together. So naturally, you and I are going to burn ourselves out more than those that have sleep above play. Sleep above play, it's like when I use the analogy of a car, the sleep function feels like the brake pedal. It's like mm -hmm. what stops and it stops and it puts the brake on and it lets the whole engine cool down. It lets it process. It lets everything that was going to overheat, just cool down. And those that have it as a savior, Dave has it first. So he's constantly aware, we need to stop, we need to take naps, we need to take breaks. And his sensitivity to that is way high. And my sensitivity to that is very low. And yeah. so you and I are going to go and we're going to work and we're going to go and we're going to work and we're going to be like, oh, I'll take my break later. I yeah. just need to get this thing done. That's what the, you know, the yeah. two play, the two, the play energy. I have to get this done. I have to get this done. I have to get this done. Yeah. And we're trying to get things done. And as soon as I get things done, then I will be allowed to take a yes. break. 
And right. I like never am allowed. <laughs> never allowed. Right. You're right. not allowed. And right. what's so crazy to me is that when I look at how I survived, like in high school and college, right. I don't know how I did it. Like <laughs> I seriously was involved in so many different activities. Like right. I would hang out with friends after school and sleepovers every Friday and Saturday. And then I would like wow. wake up yeah. early for tournaments and stuff. I literally was, I don't know how I did it to where like, I s seriously feel like I ruined my body. <laughs> like not right. like, literally ruined, but it's like, I operated in this way. And then probably when I hit around 23, 24, which I'm 25 now, but like maybe around 23, I feel yeah. like my body started to be like, Hey, like you've done this enough. Like this yeah. actually doesn't work. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, right. What you've been doing doesn't really work. And right. it's like catching up with me. And so now I feel like I have to establish all these new habits in order to prevent that. And that right. is so overwhelming. Yes. Like, it's going to feel wrong. Yeah. And did you experience that? Or, yeah. Yeah. Because I don't know how, if it's different to be like a TE person, if, right. if, or yeah, how, right. how that works for Still you. Still expending of energy. So like, that's why yeah. the two functions are just, it's like just the two extroverted functions want to just okay, I'm obligated to dance with the tribe. Think of it that way. I'm obligated to dance with and for the tribe, whether that's I got to work on the tasks or I got to go hang out with my friends or I have to go to the store or I have to get this thing done. Like just constantly going, 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 going. So yeah, absolutely. When I was in college, like literally my whole, my whole last month of college, I burnt out so bad. I literally think I stayed up for two weeks I don't, I, it wasn't straight because obviously that would have killed me, but it was pretty close. It was just unbelievable not sleeping to the point where I was delusional. Like it, it was just like, are yeah. you serious? Like, why are you doing this? Like, well, I can't not, I'm obligated to get all this work done, you know? Yeah. And of course I was stupid and I took on like, you know, so many presenta presentation classes, which is like studio classes yeah. where you just have insane work on top of work, on top of work, on top of work. That's a good because we do it to ourselves by yes. doing too much. You don't say no. What a human could do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say no. I have to say yes. So yeah, absolutely. A part of it is that you, you don't say no. Um, and that's going to feel really hard. Like what you're saying in the very beginning of like, hey, this quarantine thing is like, uh, you know, a forced thing of no. And yeah. it allows you to be like, well, I now can say no because I have to. Um, and oh my gosh, yeah. I'm getting sleep. Oh my gosh, I'm getting rest. Now it's like a way to be like, I'm going to self-care for the tribe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a way to reason it. Yes. And that's honestly how you would do it from this day on. Like that's all it is, is like, yeah. I, I had to get, first of all, I learned all of it from Dave. It did not come from me. It did not come from my own ability to go, oh, I need this many rests. It's like, I started realizing how much sleep is actually needed. And then I had to start pushing myself to get conscious of my own internal, like, you know, I'm getting past the point of like, if I don't take a nap now, I won't be able to make it the rest of the day. And that just took a lot of consciousness. Yes, you have that's to just start paying so attention. Hard. Right. And right. I think I'm trying to really teach myself, I guess, that like, when I take my vitamins or I'm eating well, or I'm well rested, right. I'm actually more productive, which yes. to me, it almost feels like that's a myth. Right. Or like, <laughs> for whatever reason, like in college, I was able to stay up all night and just right. figure out how to get something done. Right. Like I'm just used to just like cranking it out, like procrastinating. And then <laughs> it's like two hours left. I'm like, oh no, I have to do this. And then right. I do it. <laughs> and it's so much more fun to just wait up until the last second. I would do the same thing. Just wait, 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 yeah. wait. wait. And get it all done right now. <laughs> I always do that. And right. I don't really know why. Maybe it's higher play as well. Right. But right. I don't know why. I'm so you, bad if at you that. have the ability to expend the energy, then you do. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think that's it. No, you're like, I can't. So therefore, I have to overwork, way overwork, preparing over planning because I am scared. I'm not going to be able to jump and dance in the moment. Oh, that actually like, makes sense. Yeah. If you have sleep higher, you're not able, and you're not able to do the jumping and dancing. You're like, I can't get away with that. So that's interesting. Cause my INFJ likely sleep first, uh, partner is definitely that way where she will just say like, Oh, well, you're just confident. And I, stress out about it and that's why I take so long on like a mm. task where mm. like I think because I've gotten away with it so many times in my life of like 
I know I can get <laughs> right. this done and I know I can get it done in an hour and I'll allow that excitement to take me. Right. But right. I don't know. I think after a while it's excitement is also overwhelming and right. <laughs> anxiety. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. But anyway, right. is there uh, you know what it would be? It would be getting to the point where you are now where you're like, yeah. hey, that wasn't fun. And then sitting in the negativity yeah. of that wasn't fun. Do I really want to go round again? Do I want to get back on the hamster wheel and do that one more time? Or do I not want to do that? And it would just like, cause yeah. you'll still do it. Obviously you're still going to do it cause it's such a default wiring. It's such a normal pattern. It's such a normal habit. And then of course your brain wants to tell you only the positive times of when you've gotten away with it. But then when yeah. you're in the negativity of the aftermath, it would be just like, I call it like holding your hand to the fire and being like, this is not fun. I don't like this. I want to set systems in place for, to trap me in the future. Cause me in the future is going to yeah. forget all about this moment and how, you know, drained I am right now. Yeah. And I think because I have an ESFJ mom and ENFJ dad and ESFJ sister, I <laughs> just was born in a, I guess, an EJ household where right. I was always told you need to follow through on everything. You need to be a bigger <laughs> person. You need to right. do this and this, but right. yeah. Is You're there, obligated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to, I guess, add on this subject or would you like to share about <laughs> your services and all that jazz oh yeah I, I, <laughs> sure you can find us at you know op uh objective personality youtube channel is probably a good place to find us but oh, other than that um just honestly the journey that you're going through i think what you're doing is amazing i think what you're you're processing you. is on your channel is amazing and I think you're asking all the right questions and you're going through all the right things at this stage in your life. This is exactly what I wish I was doing. Cause like, think about how much processing time that you get and like consistently putting yourself out there. Like almost no one does yeah. that. Almost nobody yeah. goes through like, wow, I had a argument in a comment that was uncomfortable. Anyways, I'm going to still put out videos. I'm going to still keep going. Yeah. I'm going to still keep pushing myself. So what you are doing is, is unbelievable. It's so, so hard. And I like, I guess what I want to like give is like, make sure that anytime you're like, Oh, somebody is criticizing, or I feel like they're not seeing the real me, you know, EJ, yeah. it's like, give yourself credit because you know, no one's going to be able to give you the amount of credit you've been in your own shoes for, for, you know, your lifespan now, yeah. the amount of things that you've pushed yourself through on this journey is is far beyond what most people do. YouTube is an extremely hard thing to do really consistently is. over time. And I, I like, that's why Dave and I love you so much because we're watching you. you constantly push yourself in areas that are not easy and you still get up the next day and you still keep going and you still keep chugging along. And like we check in, you know, we're like, she's still going. <laughs> so like, really, that's really impressive. I really appreciate you saying that. And I do honestly, and I, I feel like nobody understands me. I mean, like, <laughs> I know like some people do, right. like, but it feels so good to feel seen from you guys. Yes. Cause I guess like for me, the more I push myself, then the more I don't seem like an ENFJ and it's my first <laughs> video. No one said that I wasn't an ENFJ. And it's like <laughs> right. now the more that I'm like literally trying to use my TI and then for me, it feels like you're discrediting everything I've ever said. You think I'm a fraud. <laughs> you think I'm stupid. Right, you right. You think that I'm spreading miscommunication. Like, I don't just see it as a small <laughs> right. thing. I see it as this huge thing. Right, I understand. Where like, um, but it's like, even what you were, like, I feel like I used to, if I would get a comment that I disagreed with, or if they were being like rude to me, I used to feel like I had to respond to every right. single one. Right. And now, right. like, I feel like I truly could laugh at it good. a little bit more. Like That's even good. the other day, someone said, um, this lady's annoying or something. And I just right. like hearted it. I, I get that. Like, hey, cool. Yeah. The lady. <laughs> you hearted it. That's good. <laughs> so, That's like, really good. And just like something <laughs> to bring up Gary, uh, Gary V again. Uh, right. Something that he said that really sticks with me a lot is he, he said that you should detach from both the hate comments and the go. positive comments. I heard that. That's so good. Yeah. It yes. helped yes. me so much because yeah. all of the love comments are, these are like the people that are, 
probably really similar to me or like, <laughs> I don't know, like, right, right, right. I, and then you get a high, you're like, yay, I feel amazing. And then if somebody says something, yeah. now I feel that much worse. And but, I yeah. almost want to say like, if you are too stuck on those people that absolutely love you, then chances right. are they share your saviors, maybe not. And it's like, maybe you're just going down this like circle jerk of your saviors. We're right, like, right. what if, if you want like a more universal appeal, you have to be a little bit more well-rounded and you have to speak right. to other people and other things. But yeah, it's, it's right. yeah, it's hard. And if you're on your own path, yeah. if you're truly on your own path, you're not going to need the afterburner of somebody saying you're amazing. You know, yeah. that'll take you high for a little really while, does. but the more that the outside world can affect you, the more that you'll get thrown off of your own path. And so if you are learning yes. <laughs> your TI and why are you doing this and what is your way of doing things and figuring out mm -hmm. your systems for yourself, then the ups and the low, you know, the highs and the lows of the tribe are not going to be as much pulling at your journey because you're, you know, that's, Absolutely. that is what Gary Vee is very aware. He knows his journey. He knows where he's heading and he knows there's going to be a lot of people that are going to hate him and a lot of people yes. that are going to love him, but he's still on his journey. And therefore, yeah. it makes him free. He's allowed to freely give with no need attached. Yes. Nothing. Yeah. That's really what I've been working on. That. Right. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, yeah. Shannon. And, and yeah. for those of you guys who are maybe unfamiliar or haven't gotten into uh, their videos, I really recommend because you guys, I just want to say your work with the hero's journey is amazing. Yeah. Like yeah, the self-growth right. aspect to what you guys are talking about is so so amazing and i just resonate so much with the way that you guys are looking at type as right. a self-growth tool as well and not just because mm -hmm. and i really can see you and dave really like having that fi i mean obviously dave has is an fi savior <laughs> but still, i get it yeah like the fi really comes through and I really appreciate that because it's not just like, hey, we're science nerds. We're trying to make this <laughs> scientific. It's like, yeah. it's not just that. Like you guys yeah. put so much heart into what you do and it really comes through. Thank so you. thank you so much for yeah. what you're doing and thank you for joining me and have Absolutely. a wonderful night. Thanks right. for having Bye. me, Megan. Bye. You, Bye. Megan. Bye. Yeah.